Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Mike's 84 Corvette, the only channel on YouTube devoted to my 84 Corvette, which is fairly obvious anyway, in the garage here. And we got a project we're gonna start on. We're gonna uh, fix this heater control valve, which has been leaking. Um, talked about it in a previous video. I got some parts. I'm gonna show you what I did and the mistake I made and all that fun stuff right after this. Alright guys, so here's the situation. This heater control valve is leaking. And these are damn near impossible to find. I've been looking everywhere for one. And as I mentioned in a previous video, I watched another video where a guy took parts from a different heater control valve, used parts from the existing one, cobbled it together and made it work. So here's that part and I'll put that part number down in the description below but basically you're supposed to remove these or at least bend these tabs back there's four of them uh, take this whole part off of this little two-way manifold because the one on our cars are and the Corvette is three-way and then replace the leaky part which typically is this screw right here is where it leaks and use the good one on that manifold I guess you call it manifold or three-way back there reuse that but there's a problem here because this little nipple is straight and the one on the old one which I took the vacuum hose off is bent 90 degrees so I don't know if this part can be reused I don't know it's just it's frustrating I have the whole part on order back order through zip Corvette and they're saying they're gonna get some soon and ship it out to me I don't have a lot of faith that it's going to show up but I did order it and in the meantime this other part I ordered off of eBay which was similar but also again it's reversed from what we have down there. I don't know if you can see that. I'll put this here. So that goes that way. I don't know if you can tell, but the elbow that actuates the valve inside is so if I do that side by side. different it's the other way I don't know if that's going to affect how it works I don't know but um, first part of this task is going to be to get this unit off and it's really just the clamp um, I guess it's the bottom hose here that goes into the heater core over there which runs back to it there's this top one right here that has to come off. There's this one right there that has to come off. So there's three hose clamps. And then there's a bracket or a way down there. I don't know if you can see, but down there, there's a, uh, a bolt that has to come undone. And then this whole thing should come out. And then, I've also decided that if I'm going to be doing that, I might as well replace this one here. So I got this elbow, which almost works. Have to be trimmed. 
And then what I'm going to do is also replace this lower radiator hose because that's probably, who knows how old that guy is down there. That one's pretty old. I'm going to drain and flush as best I can the radiator. That radiator hose over there is new. And I also bought a new thermostat. I'm going to put a new thermostat in. But the first thing in all this is we got to see if we can get this fixed up so it doesn't leak anymore. So that's the first task. So I'm going to undo the uh, clamps, the hose clamps, and then uh, see if I can get that bolt off down there. Hold on. guys so out of after a lot of pulling and prying here is the offending item and it's leaking from right there and looking at this one as you can see this whole piece if you can find it is like 180 bucks this was like 35 I think but there's got to be a way to get this the parts from in here that aren't leaking onto here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all this inside put it on a table and start taking it apart and I'll show you guys what I find All right, guys, so as I mentioned, I was going to bring that uh, water heater valve inside and take it apart to see what uh, was going on in there. So I did that. Let me get some of these tools out of here just to show you what, uh, what happened here. So this is basically the valve itself, and this is the hose tubing pipe assembly that it goes to. And... What I did was, um, I don't know if you can see these little tabs right here. You have to pry them up off of, uh, they come out through these little tabs and the tabs go, I guess the tabs go through these little holes and you gotta bend them back and then this whole assembly pops out. Um, I ended up having to use, I used this chisel to at least get underneath it because they were pretty tight. And then just some regular screwdrivers with nice flat blades to just pry it up and came off. I mean, there's no seal or anything there. It's just metal to metal. But the interesting part is that when I took it apart, took it off. Oh, I forgot. There's also a screw that over here that you have to uh, take off. But when everything came apart, as you can see, let me get, try and get some more light a little bit closer there. Hopefully you can see it, but the pieces inside all broken. This seal is okay, but this plastic here cracked broken so that's why it was leaking so the next step is to take this new one and do the basically the same thing and take these bend these tabs back get the guts out of here and move those guts into here Oops, sorry into there Pop this back on and hopefully everything works. 
Uh, one thing that I was a little surprised and happy about is that this uh, vacuum still holds. I guess the diaphragm inside still holds. I can put my finger, can I put my finger over it? And it holds. So that still works, which is good. But what I think I'm gonna do before I get this off, uh, you know, take this one apart, is I'm gonna clean this up. I think I'm gonna take it outside and just spray it with some degreaser just to clean it up because it's kind of messy. Oh, and one other thing, this is the uh, part number. It's actually new old stock that I got on eBay. AC water valve 14039637, AC Delco, made in USA, printed in the USA anyway. Um, and, you know, it's brand new, sitting in the box for years and years. So hopefully, I can take it apart, put those inside the other one, and then this whole assembly, I'll put it back together and put it back in the car. And hopefully, we won't have any leaks, but let me clean this up. I'm gonna take this apart off camera because nobody needs to see me struggling with this and scuffing my, you know, banging up my knee, uh, my my uh, my knuckles and fingers and whatnot. But once it's apart, I'll show you uh, the difference between the parts. All right, so hang on, be a couple seconds. All right, guys, I wanted to show you where I'm at with this next step in this project. Um, so this was the new um, heater control valve that I bought, which I mentioned. And I pried off uh, the tabs from the new one. And from there, we got this. Now this is what will replace all these broken parts that you can see right there. Let me move the light a little closer. But uh, all this stuff was all broken and I'm gonna use this inside, inside this. And as you can see, I cleaned it up. I used some engine degreaser and some steel wool and it cleaned up, oops, sorry, cleaned up nicely. Um, so just a couple of things. Uh, when I opened up this new one, this came out, which is what I really need. And a couple other little parts came out. Uh, this, I think, is just... Hold on a sec. This part right here, I think, is just specific to the new one because I can't find a use for it in the old one. So that's getting discarded. This little seal came from inside this little manifold, but there already is one in here. I don't think you can see it, but there's one in here, only one. So I'm going to leave it in there. It seems to be in good shape. Um, the only other things that I've come across so far is that when I was taking this off of here and you have to remove the screw, which goes into the top of that, I'm turning, turning and turning, turning left, turning left, turning left, and it's not moving until I realized how stupid I am because this was turning inside of this manifold right here. So I just stuck a screwdriver down and held it in place and it came out. So that problem was solved. Let's get these parts out of the way. Second, I was looking at this going in and I've got you know this gasket on top here and then you have to figure out and I was trying to figure out how I would index 
this so it would be when I hooked it all back up it's got to be open so it's got to be those passages have to be in the open position not the closed position and I couldn't figure out exactly how to do it until I look closer at this and you probably can't really see it but this connector is actually um, not even it's got like a little point on this side right here on this left side, on this uh, one of these sides, is you, you can see it's not flat. It's got a little uh, angle to it. And then looking closer at this, you can see that at the top, instead of it being square, it's got a little, I don't know, it comes to a point at the top there. So that's how you index it to make sure it's in the right position because this will be normally open and then when you turn on your air conditioning it draws a vacuum and this goes up and it rotates that valve and closes the heat going into the heater core. So that's where I am right now. Next step will be to put all of this back together, put the new, this new valve in there with the fitting and then put everything back together and put the screw back down and hopefully everything tightens up so I'm gonna get to that I don't think you guys really need to see that I will just show you afterwards and explain exactly how it all went together okay guys so here's the next update so I got the back attached to the front and those four tabs through those slots and that was a pain in the neck because you can get like three to fit and then the fourth one is a little bit off so you have to bend it and then the other two don't fit back and forth back and forth but i think i got them in there this top uh oops this top one here uh oops is a little not completely bent over but I can't bend it any farther so we got three and a half good ones in there I looked underneath here um, and it's all tight and even around uh, one tip though is I put the screw this holding screw in here to hold on to that plastic bit so it wouldn't everything wouldn't fall through because if it falls through it's gonna go in here and then you're going to have to take this whole thing apart again. Um, so now what I'm going to do is attach this arm to here. I'm going to have to be pretty careful. Make sure it's indexed correctly. And take the screw out. Well, take the screw out, put this on, put the screw in, tighten it all up. And uh, then it goes back on the car. Hopefully everything works. So it's, uh, it's just about done. I'll show you when everything's finished. All right, guys, so it's all put back together. And uh, as you can see, it looks pretty good. The front here got a little boogered up me clamping it and trying to get those tabs down but I made a big mistake which I had to correct which is probably part of the reason why it's all boogered up over here because I had to open it up again and it's just uh, <clears throat> due to my stupidity because I was trying to figure out how to get that little plastic um, valve in there and uh, to try and sit in here in the back here in this you know tube area whatever you want to call it and then this top part to go around it and it's impossible to do it that way which I learned so I thought about it and I'm like duh attach it to here first then put this whole piece in and then clamp it down 
So yeah, I screwed up. And unfortunately, I had to take all this apart, put it back together, but now it works. Um, here, vacuum work. Um, and it does hold the vacuum if I keep my finger over there. I can't do it with one hand though. But uh, now it's just a matter of putting it back into the car. So I'm done inside, back in the car. And to test it, make sure it, you know, it'll pull the vacuum and hold it. And then, um, this might be a little bit too, too tight. I might hit it with a little silicone spray so it moves up and down a little bit easier. And also make sure it doesn't leak. I think that's the most important thing, really, that doesn't leak at all. So uh, that's what's next. So I'll be back out to the garage, and I'll show you how it all goes back together. All right, guys, I'm back in the garage with the car. Got the completed piece here. And basically, it's just reversing what I did to take it out. There's three hoses that get hooked up. There's one there. There's the one back there that goes to the heater core and back there. Um, there's also the vacuum line right there. It's got to be put back on. And way, put that right there, way down there. That's just a 10 millimeter screw. And that's really the hardest part because there's not a whole lot of room to get a, uh, a socket in there. And uh, what I used was uh, this, which is, I found this on Amazon. Actually, when I, I got this when I was doing the heater core, it's kind of like a bendy extension. And it can go in places that even other extensions, extensions with like the, the wobble sockets can't get into. Um, you can't put a lot of force on it because it's really not, it's kind of like just wire, but it does get into those tight places. So uh, let me do that, I'll show you that, and then we'll get the, uh, get this all buttoned up. All right, so I got the three hoses on, which, as you saw, a bit of a struggle, but they're all, they're all in. Let's have to put the clamps on. Uh, now I'm gonna get that 10 millimeter squared away down in there. So, hold on. I got the. Uh, Got the 10 millimeter started with my fingers. Now I'm going to uh, use the extension to tighten it up. All right guys, so it's all installed. Vacuum lines back on, the uh, hose so the heater core is back on, this bypass, and I guess, I'm not really sure what that is. One back there, let me know. Anyway, so now it's time for the test. I'm gonna turn the car on. I guess a win would be if it doesn't leak at all. A double win if it actuates 
and goes back. I guess I gotta turn the AC on. Um, so yeah, let me uh, open the garage door and uh, turn everything on and I'll show you what happens. guys well I think that's a success it worked no uh, no leaks ran it for a while um, interesting thing that I learned and I was a little worried about it because I turned the air conditioning on on and off and uh, it was still ouch still hot <laughs> still pulling vacuum here then I figured out that the vacuum is controlled by the heat uh, the temperature control so if you put it on cool that's when the vacuum comes on so a little interesting tidbit there anyway um, it worked if you have any questions comments whatever just let me know I can help you out with doing this it wasn't too hard and once again thanks for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe and more videos coming.